Every time I'm in the Sunday pulpit until the Lord says otherwise, I'm going to be preaching on this new message series, and the title of it is Miracles. So it's so important that we, you know, whatever you hear about is what you're going to believe for. And I believe that God has put this message series on my heart because he wants us to begin to expect miracles. You know, and, and not, it wasn't just reserved for the Old Testament or the New Testament or Jesus or the disciples. This is the plan of God for his church today. Amen? So miracles are important. And we know about miracles because of the word of God. Anybody have a Bible in the house? Let's lift it up to heaven. Let's say this together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a shout. You know, the Bible itself is a miracle. The fact that we have this today and that we could read from it and see the words of God that were recorded under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit so that we could hear it and do it is a miracle. People have tried to destroy it and burn it and because you know what? It is a living book. And they have so many different translations today in my study. Mostly I'll be teaching today. I'll be speaking from the New Living Translation. But the Bible is a miracle. And it is accepted as one of the greatest masterpieces of world literature. It is unrivaled by any other work in any language from any age. But it's more than this. The Bible claims to be the written word of God. Remember, I've often told you this. God's word was spoken so that it would be written. And it was written so that it would be spoken. So when we, we, when we read it, God, it's important to read out loud. You know, a lot of people say, you know, I don't ever hear God. I've never heard God. Well, you know, just turn over to the Psalms or the Proverbs or any scriptures and that God inspired people to read and read it out loud. And your own voice will be speaking what God said. And you can say, yeah, I heard God today. His word is him. Amen. It is the word of God. The Bible's contents or of the greatest antiquity. Parts of it are over 3,000 years old, and as any historian worth his salt will tell you, it contains the oldest and most reliable records of ancient history ever written. You've often heard that there was a lot of things that were written in the scriptures, but at some point they would just have to believe it totally by faith, and then all of a sudden archaeological digs or something happened in our modern times even that really confirmed it. No other book in the world can begin to compare with the Bible for the way that it helps us both to understand the past and thereby largely help us to understand the present and our future. Amen. 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 The Bible's influence on history of the history of civilization has been enormous. As the textbook of two of the great religions of the world, Judaism and Christianity, it has been a source of moral, morality and enlightenment to countless millions down the centuries. I'm talking about the Bible. You can't talk about miracles without going to the Bible and finding out what the Bible has to say about it. And it was written down so that we would speak it and know that this, hap this is Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. You know, and it's, the Bible is perfect in its accuracy and infallible in its dependability. It is the absolute, complete, and entire trustworthiness of the Holy Scriptures. You know, the word Bible is not in the Bible. I don't know how many people know that. We call it the Holy Scriptures. That's what people say, oh, well, you know that rapture is not in the Bible. Well, neither is the word Bible. But Bible simply means a collection of books, but we call it the Holy Scriptures. We often refer to it as the Bible. But it stands head and shoulders above all of the very great, great, greatest literature of the world, and it has earned our attention and respect. Amen. I've heard it said that I asked President Ronald Reagan years ago uh, if he was stranded on a desert island and he could only bring one book, what book would he bring? And he said, well, the Holy Bible because it's the only living book. And every time you read it, I don't know if you're, I'm sure you have experienced that yourself. You read it, sometimes you've read something 25 times or more, and all of a sudden you read it and the light goes on. You get lit. 
up with the Word of God. Amen? Hallelujah. God is so good. I hope you enjoyed that powerful clip from Pastor Kathy. We would love for you to come and join us at Covenant Church. Services take place every Sunday at 10 a.m. and Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. right here in Destrehan, Louisiana. And if you watch online and consider yourself an e-member, we want to connect with you. So email us at partnercare at jdm.org today. To watch this full Sunday service and more Covenant Church messages, download the free JDM app. Thank you for watching. Together we're reaching people and changing lives one soul at a time. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries consent is strictly prohibited.